All right, what's going on, everybody out there? It is the Schwanz 27, and we are doing some Final Fantasy VI. Worlds Collide, as you can see up on the screen, Ultras League Season 6 signups are now available. If you go to the website ultrasleague.com, and if you look in the most recent post updating you on what is going idea, or what is going around rather with Season 6, you will see that there are some flag updates that we'll get into as the racers are going on their run here. But if, in case you are interested and want to hop in for some octopus action, uh, now is the time as signups are open. You can throw your hat in the ring, whether you are a returning veteran or if you're a brand new player to Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide, the Ultros League uh, attempts to give a competitive balance within the league uh, such that it's not always going to be a crushing defeat for you if you are a newer runner out there. It aims to sort of get a sort of competitive balance uh, amongst all of the divisions here. So what do we have on the table for you? We have Ultra League Season 6. Uh, some of the new things that we are going to be looking for is instead of a 21 check skip, that has been increased to 22 checks now. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, that is, there is one extra check that you need to get if you would like to go for skip. So we will maybe see it a little bit less often than we did in the previous season. We've also uh, bumped the lures here uh, to start from... 3 to 5 is now going to be 6 to 10. Um, so that is going to at least give our lore users something a little bit better than uh, they would go ahead and do. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to let our racers get started here uh, in about 30 seconds. And... The only other uh, difference is the curse shield battle. So that went up by one in the direction for both the minimum and the maximum. It was six to 14 battles to uncurse that shield. Now we're going to be at the seven to 15 range. So that is what we're looking at for potentially uncursing our shield here. Our runners for tonight are going to be in the upper right hand, uh, upper left hand corner is Mark, a veteran of Elixir and Mega Elixir uh, pro praise here. I believe he this season will be uh, slotted for another slot in Elixir, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so he finished in third place, one behind Pedro Canaris in Elixir B from last season, so he will most likely remain in Elixir. Uh, we have one free fits who was also in elixir a but tied for third place so he will remain probably in the elixir division as well knuckly kong is a new member on uh on the the docket here and he will probably slide into uh into tonic so that'll be really nice for him and honeydew was last season's mvp of the potion a league with 54 points and a first place win. So he will be moving on up. No, not to the east side, but to the Elixir division. So you've got a lot of formidable foes here in uh, in this particular race. So hope you enjoy um, the race that we have going on for you. Um, and we'll get the runners off and going here. We'll see what three characters we start out with, and uh, that'll be really good. We'll see if we get any a lore user. That would be awfully nice to showcase the new, uh, you know, minimum and maximum lures here. And it looks like we have hit the go button, so our racers are off and running. We at least have Cyan, as well as Gogo and Shadow which I think are the three characters on this promo. No, it's Gogo, <laughs> Shadow, and Strago. So I, I was close there. Uh, that's a kind of a crazy prediction, actually, between uh, who gets what. And we'll see where our runners decide to go. With Gogo and Shadow, we at least have two free checks that we can go do. And it looks like every single runner is heading into World of Balance Narsh to loot some 10 treasure chests that we have here and to go on a little bit of a shopping spree. I suspect 
in order to get into Gogo's uh, Zone Eater check, we're going to want to find some Warp Stones first. There's a Thunder Shield in the shed there, so that'll be nice for one of our characters or multiple of our characters to learn Bolt 2. One of the nice things about Gogo is that Gogo can mimic anything that you do. So now one Bolt 2 spell has just turned into two Bolt 2 spells, which is really nice. I didn't get a, quite get a chance to see, because I was doing the tracking as well in the one-man wrecking crew that I am tonight, what the commands were on our different characters once one of our runners decides to get into battle. We will see exactly what those particular uh, commands are here. It looks like we do have Throw on Shadow and Steel on uh, on Setzer. I'm uh, not Setzer, Cyan. So we already have a Throw Go in place, which is really nice. Because Go Go can be able to mimic these shurikens now and the water edges that Mark is buying over there in the, uh, in the World of Balance Narsh Weapon Shop. So that is going to be a combination that we will hopefully see throughout this particular run. Uh, throw Go is one of my favorite things to do in the game. It is really, really fun in order to just, you know, yeet things at enemies and watch them die. So Mark is going to give us a first look here at Gal Manor. So this is Shadow's free check. We're going to make sure that our little Chocobo guy does not run away. Uh, and we are going to pick up an Esper there right away. That is Ifrit there. Mark looks like they're going to pick that one up. Same thing with Fitz. I did not even get to see what Honeydew reset out of. He peeked the monster in a box. It went way too fast for me. So chat, you have more eyes than I do as I'm trying to watch four different screens at a time. So if you see something that I miss, go ahead and call it out. And also, if you have any questions for me, I will repeat them back uh, so that the viewers at home who may be watching this on YouTube, hi YouTube, uh, <laughs> will also know what the heck you're asking. Standard looting route here for uh, some of our runners heading into the returner's hideout next is there are nine treasure chests in here and a weapon shop, uh, rather an item shop that you can go to. So we'll see where our runners decide to go after they've done their initial looting and shopping phase. That's usually the first eight to ten minutes of seed is probably looting and shopping. Uh, with a throw and a go-go start, I anticipate we will cut our looting phase pretty short and start fighting things right away. The interesting thing is there's a hero ring in a pot. That'll be really nice for our throw character to get buffs to both the shurikens that they throw and those elemental skeins that they throw. So the, I think the big question on everybody's mind is going to be, uh, when are our runners going to go to the floating continent? Because that is a play that is pretty spicy usually early on because you don't know if you could defeat both of the bosses at the end of the floating continent. However, with the throw ability, that certainly uh, makes that way more appealing to do early on. And there are two guaranteed pieces of progression when you go all the way through the floating continent. Yes, it's about an 8 to 10 minute time sink. However, there are lots of uh, forced encounters, three of them to be exact, on the way before the first save point. And there are a couple in order to get off of the island. So it's a great place to not only level up, but to guarantee your progression as well with access to shadow. We also have Cyan's Dream, as we do see everybody can wear an Enhancer, so that's plus 7 magic power in your slot stick stat, so it looks like uh, Mark is going to pick up one of those there as Honeydew picks up their Esper there. Plus 7 magic power is really good, especially for Gogo, -Go, because Gogo -Go cannot get any Esper equips in order to get any stat bonuses on on Gogo. -Go. So we're going to need to find equipment for Gogo -Go if Gogo -Go is going to stay in the party for the entire duration of the game to buff their stats. Meanwhile, an economizer found by Knuckly Kong and One Free Fits there. Uh, Mark did not go ahead and loot that just yet as he hopped over to the World of Ruin, South Figaro. So you can loot the chests on the exterior portions of both of the South Figaros. They're different in each world. The basement uh, is joint looted. So if you loot it in one world, it's already looted when you go down there in the other one. So we'll see if he picks up that economizer from the basement there. That would be really nice to get our characters going if we had... 
uh, something really good on that Ifrit Esper, let's say. Remember, Ultima is in play at 254 MP. So if we later find a, either an Esper with Ultima, or maybe we get Lock so that we can uncurse the shield, that could be another good item to have in our back pocket. Or for nothing else, we could sell it for a nice bit as fits. Picks up those enhancers and some water edges as well. So he's going to be uh, increasing the stats of his characters here. Andrew Racho in the house, raiding with a party of two. What up, Andrew? Thank you so, so much for uh, the raid. Hopefully everybody who's coming in can sit at uh, their table of two and enjoy this Ultros League Season 6 practice race. Uh, Fitz is in Albrook, World of Balance Albrook, so he won't be able to get the treasure, treasure chest on the dock, but the shops in here are actually different than the shops in the World of Ruin Albrook, which is where most people go. So maybe he's hoping to snag something here that some of his other compatriots might not get along the way. Ultrasleague.com is the website for um, the updates to Ultrasleague Season 6. There's been a couple of tweaks. Uh, something you can see immediately on the screen is that we do now have 22 checks towards Skip. And actually, uh, a few of our runners have already done checks, so let me go ahead and mark those off. Uh, 22 checks towards Skip instead of the 21 that we had in the previous Ultrasleague uh, Season 5. And wow, Bolt to flare and fire three on that ifrit esper so that is a really nice one to have right away and we'll be able to leverage that economizer because that fire three is probably going to cost way more than we can cast very early on in the seed mark taking off one of the three moogle trones we give our runners at the start of every seed in order to go ahead and take some grind fights here i don't hate this play uh a couple of fights now will pay off in much dividends later on even one or two random grind fights will allow you to get much further ahead of scaling than just continuing to snowball on bosses as you get in on the seed here looks like fitz is parked right outside of doma castle so he might be going into the doma siege check from cyan here and i believe honeydew is our first runner in to zen we'll see what to zen is selling wow that is a cheap esper Less than five grand GP for that. So he's going to pick up yet another Esper, uh, as, well, as well as maybe some of those earrings in the shop there for, uh, for Tizen. And we'll see what that Esper actually is here. Looks like Honey is going to go ahead and pick that up. It is the Ragnarok Esper. Um, the Ifrit Esper does have some really nice spells on it. One free fits, taken off the Mughal Charm, and finds the Daedalus Veteran uh, fight. So the bottom, uh, the Daedalus, can actually be killed with a Revivify. Uh, unfortunately, I think that must have been a misclick there onto the Veteran. Sometimes when you have these weird encounter formations, uh, when you push buttons that you think are supposed to point to things, they don't actually do that. Pearl Lance in a shop there for Honeydew, and I know we saw a set of dragoon boots in a shop somewhere 51 grand in the world of ruin for that to zen thief on mark's screen so hopefully he goes to the world of balance to zen finds that for a heck of a lot cheaper instead of selling the farm to buy it here in the world of ruin yeah so this veteran is going to take a little bit to kill but will give a juicy amount of xp um so this is a really nice uh grind fight that we see here making use of that throw with the Mimic. And you can also steal some earrings from the veteran. Nice heads up play there from one free fits, because Cyan at level three is not really gonna do very much in terms of offense, but being able to, to nab some earrings off of that enemy is a really good heads up play. And we're already at level nine, just like I mentioned there. Um, so Fitz catapulting his uh, character's up with just one grind fight there. So we'll see if he decides to take on some more grind fights. You could actually go up to the soldiers in Doma Siege and interact with them and they will fight you. So that is one thing you can do. However, if you can't beat this boss, you will lose all of that leveling progress. Unlike in the vanilla Final Fantasy VI game, you don't get the levels back when you go back to the, the, uh, the save point. I don't believe Veteran has Natural Float, because Interceptor will miss floating things, and clearly 
Um, it looks like Veteran should be floating, right? He's got little wings on him, but apparently not. You know what's funny? They're called Airman in uh, the, the new, or the, the, the remaster. Or Araman. But yeah, they are not floating. It doesn't look like it. It's also considered a human target, which is also a bit odd and strange. Meanwhile, it is Tritok here at uh, Doma Siege. Normally this would be a problem because we don't have any fire magic, but we do have some fire elemental skeins. And if we don't have those, which I don't think one free fits does, shurikens are defense ignoring, so that'll get us through this uh, this Tritok fight here. Mark is going to have a much better time, though. One fire skein and uh, a mimic will be, be dead with that, so... Yeah, definitely a, definitely a strange-looking human character. Uh, meanwhile, Knuckly Kong actually summoning Ifrit. So that's another thing that our runners can do, is use the Ifrit summon if they didn't have the fire skeins. It looks like, however, unfortunately, uh, it is just a force shield from Doma Siege. Which I guess is not the worst thing in the world, because when you... Get dead checks early on. It just means you're going to be ahead of scaling on your uh, your boss fights later on. Looks like Knuckly Kong not uh, not remembering that this is an undead enemy, or maybe doesn't know. And you could just use a revivify on this Didalos instead of actually fighting it. It looks like with that Esper, Mark is going to go ahead and head over to Mount Zozo, and this is a really good heads up play as well because. You can fight the dragon and learn all of the spells on that wonderful Ifrit Esper, as well as get a choice of a high tier item. And you will be able to get whatever is at the end of this check also. So Mark is saying, well, I have some, uh, oh, I also have some fixed ice in a chest there. Unknown if Cyan can use that, but if he can, then that is what Cyan will be doing for a good portion of the seed there. It's like Knuckly Kong's having some issues with his controller here. Always charge your uh, controllers before you're going on stream, peeps. <laughs> Looks like One Free Fits is going to follow Mark over here into Mount Zozo as well. Gonna let Cyan learn all of the spells, because basically, dragons give out 50 MP, so you're going to learn... All of the spells on an Esper, unless it's at a 1x rate, something like Merton or Quick or Ultima. And unfortunately, Fitz forgets the Rust Rid at home. <laughs> Need that WD-40 there. And it is an Ice Dragon, so yet again, another boss that is weak to fire. So this is a really nice one here. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like Cyan can use that Fixed Ice Mark, making good use of his time here. Not bothering to go to the... Uh, equip menu in between the fight and using the time that the boss is actually being killed in order to check his equipables there. So that's a that's a elixir mega elixir play as I mentioned earlier because Mark has been in both of those divisions in prior Ultra Sleek seasons. We'll see what's at the end here of uh, our Mount Colts and uh, or rather Mount Zozo and it is Celeste who could naturally equip that Minerva that we just got from this dragon. So that's going to be a very, very nice pickup there for Mark as he is on, I believe this is his, no, this will be his fourth check here. Tritok down for Honey, and it looks like Tritok is going down as well for Knuckly there. So both of them will get another check. Uh, capture, unfortunately, on Celeste, but with that amazing Ifrit Esper, I expect that we are going to be doing uh, magic most of the time. And unfortunately, no warp stones here for Mark, so he's going to have to do the walk of shame out of here. Wah, wah, wah. So that's normally something you're looking for in shops before you go and do a check like Mount Zozo or Zone Eater or something like that. You would like to have 
those uh, those warp stones to get out of here quickly. Fitz, unfortunately, not having access to fire schemes means that this is going to take a little longer than normal. And uh oh, we're in trouble here. But thankfully, Fitz has enough firepower to take down that ice dragon. Meanwhile, I believe. On the bottom half of the screen, we have some floating continent plays from Honeydew and Knuckly Kong. So this is what I mentioned. When are our runners going to decide to do floating continent? It's very enticing with two guaranteed pieces of progression. And when you have throw plus go go, it is really appealing to do that. Mark is going to leverage the Celeste as Fitz is also going to leverage the Celeste as well. Um, and gonna go check and see what's in the basement here so question from the chat from utter butter um, what do you need to do in order to participate in a race so basically uh, as that's a Odin Esper there for Mark so that's another Esper for him so basically I am capturing the feeds of the runners twitch streams so they are streaming to their own individual twitch pages and then I am gathering them all up in one spot and putting an overlay behind it. And the overlay is all the stuff in the middle that you see. And then the screens are just from the runners' Twitch. So if you wanted to participate in a race, just be on the lookout in our Discord for people calling for volunteers to run races on Restream. Um, and you can be part of the race if you would like to join the sync race room and instructions usually follow in the sync race race room and oh no look at the first boss on floating continent okay maybe i am biting my tongue a little bit about what happened here it is the spicy chicken however honeydew has a pearl rod and is going to mimic that maybe a few times and hopefully that will uh, take down our uh our Scoville unit looking friend over there. Yeah, so in our Discord, there's also a race roles uh, channel where you could ask to be on the ping to race roll. So usually when restream teams are looking for runners to race, they will mention the ping to race roll so that this way you'll get notified when people want to race. And the second Pearl Rod is going to do it there for Honeydew. Let's see how uh, Knuckly Kong decides to deal with uh, this threat here. It looks like we're going to be doing throw, and Cyan is going to be using that Ice 3 spell. Unfortunately, even though it is a spicy chicken, he's actually weak to poison and not weak to ice. Ice will do some pretty decent damage, as you can see, because it's a tier 3 elemental spell, but it's not the weakness of Poltergeist. And back-to-back <laughs> -back emotes on the floating continent we now have a dabbing yeti as the second boss which should not be a problem there with our fire skins mark however is finding out the hard way that the atma weapon boss will absorb every element that isn't fire lightning and ice unfortunately healing the boss with that water edge but now he's back on track and he's got the right stuff there as he's starting to use the fire skins against uh this Atma here at Cyan's dream number one. Unfortunately, Knuckly having a little bit of trouble here. And was that Setzer on the floating continent? That is Setzer for Honeydew. And Setzer has Rage. I didn't see exactly which Rages were highlighted because he went by it while I was uh, taking a look at the fight over on Knuckly Kong's screen. Poltergeist is down, though. And both Gogo -Go and Shadow will come back to life for this next fight, because there is a free story heal in between the first two bosses of the Floating Continent. Otherwise, this check would be really, really brutal. All right, so Atma is down and the full team is alive for Mark. So we'll see what he gets from Cyan's Dream number one. It's another Magicite there with Alexander. And this is the pugs that you don't want to see in the Monster in a Box for Honeydew. As Fitz actually didn't even loot the South Figaro basement, it looks like. So he's going to go ahead and loot that now while he has Celeste 
In the second part of Cyan's Dream, Mark sees that it is a soldier sprite, so this will be an Esper, because there is guaranteed progression at the second spot in Cyan's Dream. So Mark getting at least two Espers here. He's hoping for the trifecta, the three for three, because the Doma Throne can only be an Esper or an item. Uh, so Fitz picks up his third Esper, I believe, from the basement. Yes, and he's got another check under his belt there. All right, so we it looks like we have maybe two paths through the seed so far to be determined because we haven't done any of the checks from the new characters that we've gotten except for Celeste's South Figaro Prisoner check, and that was not another character. So Knuckly Kong getting past that dabbing Yeti and will pick up their Setzer with Rage. Question in the chat from a rabid wombat. Is there a list of which checks have guaranteed progression somewhere? Yes. So on our website, uh, ff6worldscollide.com, there is a link to the wiki. And in the wiki, it describes all of the checks that the game has to offer. And in that description, it will tell you what the rewards of certain checks are. If some are guaranteed to have progression, if some can only be Esper item, if some are uh, only items, right? There is the Atma check that can be only an item. Um, so some of the guaranteed progression checks include uh, Cyan's Dream number two, Floating Continent number one and number three, Magitek Factory number three, uh, and the Velt. I believe those are the guaranteed progression checks. Oh, and Fanatic's Tower. I think that's all of them. Chat will obviously correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just thinking about them off the top of my head, but I think those are the ones. Fitz coming face to face with his Atma here. And I think he has bolt edges, but it looks like he's just going to use Ice 3 instead. So this will be nice for Fitz, because um, he's going to learn a lot of those spells on that wonderful Ifrit Esper that we saw before for his new character, Celeste, there. And it is the mascot of the league there as the second boss of Cyan's Dream. That is Ultros. And Honey beat that second boss already. I didn't see what it is, but I do see on his tracker that it wasn't an Esper. So unfortunate dead check there at Floating Continent number two. The only time that Floating Continent check can be dead. So hopefully I'll catch it on Knuckly Kong's screen here. All right, Mark taking down Ultros. Oh, it's Tentacles. All right. I did see a glimpse of this. I just completely forgot. As that is the Crusader Esper there for Mark's next check. He does learn all eight sword techs as well. That's one of the things, one of the objectives that you get for completing Cyan's Dream. Let's see what is on the throne here. It is another Esper show. So three for three for Cyan's Dream. The dream, having the shiny stones in this seed tonight, folks. I'd be very happy about that. Meanwhile, Honey, getting through the two Force Encounters in the third part of the Floating Continent. We'll see what the boss is after he decides to go after another treasure chest. Oh, no! It is Magimaster at the end of the Floating Continent. So what Honeydew is deciding is I'm going to throw my biggest elemental uh, damage at Magimaster for the first turn because he does not have his wall change. And then after the wall change, we're going to throw our non-elemental stuff at it. So spells like Flare will work. Uh, the things that you could throw at Magimaster, the Shurikens, right? Not the elemental schemes, obviously. But the shurikens will ignore the very high uh, physical defense of Magimaster. So this fight won't be a problem with the tools that he has. It'll just take a little bit because Flare takes forever to cast. And uh, shurikens do some damage, but not nearly as much as, uh, you know, having access to Berserk. And it looks like Mark finally finds some warp stones there in, uh, in World of Balance to Zen. Alright, so Knuckly Kong showing me that it was a force armor. Honeydew getting past Magimaster for his third Esper there, Torado, and he's off the floating continent. 
All right, so lots of different espers there. Ice three with magic power plus two is a nice one for that Crusader. Uh, Alexander has got magic power plus one and Exone, which is really good for our final battle. And there is Berserk on Shoat. Wow. Cyan's Dream having the goods this seed as far as uh, espers and what spells they teach as well. Knuckly Kong running into some level magics here. And by running into, I mean running away from. Little Coliseum dip action here for Honey. Don't see anything in here that I would actually want. He's going to take a flyer on those warp stones. Because I don't believe he was in World of Balance to Zen. No, he does have the to Zen Thief Esper. So maybe he just didn't buy them. Yeah, rods are really great to have. Uh, if you can sell enough stuff in your inventory for some rods, I highly suggest it. And one of the reasons why is it because it trivializes lots of different bosses. And uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Coliseum. Not going well here for Honey. Iron Fist confusing Setzer. Setzer using Flare on himself. And that is a RIP. Press F to pay respects for Setzer in the chat. Knuckly getting past his second forced encounter here. Let's see what he does against Magic Master. Into the Magitech Factory, and we've got Ghost Train. Unfortunately, we haven't learned X Zone yet, because we could uh, just. Oh, we did learn X Zone. Okay. So Mark is hopefully uh, taking this Choo Choo Train away. So in the vanilla game for Final Fantasy VI. You can just throw a Phoenix down or a Revivify on Ghost Train and some of the other uh, undead enemies here. But in uh, Worlds Collide, we have a no undead property or flag, which strips the undead property from bosses. And there is Lock for uh, for Honey in the Colon Janin. So Honey is going to take Lock. Mark did not get an Esper there. I didn't see quite what the reward was because I was looking to see what Locke had as a uh, command, and I completely missed it anyway. Meanwhile, Fitz is heading over to the Velt Cave. One of Shadow's checks as well. Ooh! Sniper's in the shop there at World of Ruin Colingen, and that is something that Locke can naturally equip, so we're going to go ahead and pick one of those up for Honeydew's latest party member there, Locke. Meanwhile, it's a French Vanilla Cranes, Niles and Frazier, here at the second part of the Magitech Factory. Usually that they're they're at the end of the Magitech Factory in the Vanilla game. They are weak to water, so that's why that Water Edge did a heck of a lot of damage here. So that's an easy way to take out the Cranes, because they're both weak to that. Whereas, they're also weak to Lightning, but one of them absorbs Lightning and the other one does not. Left loves Lightning. So don't use lightning on the left one. Magi Master down for Knuckly Kong. Kieran is the Esper for Mark. They're at the second part of the Magitech Factory. And he's going through to the end here on the minecart ride. So he did buy some warp stones beforehand. So I was thinking that maybe he would uh, he would warp out. But it looks like he's going to go ahead and keep going on the Magitech Factory. And the reason why is because there is guaranteed progression here. Um, and he has so far faded... The floating continent um so if you're gonna do one check with uh force progression that's pretty long you might as well do this one it's yes it's long but if you're already here it's not any longer than say opera house disruption or going up to that aforementioned floating continent meanwhile one free fits at uh at the Velt Cave finds Hyden and the Hyden Knights with an Esper on the ground there. So he will get an Esper out of this check. If it was an NPC on the ground, then it would be a dead check. Gonna do a Pura Rod and then mimic that. So Hyden will go away rather quickly because Hyden is weak to Pearl. Question from the chat. So there are, um, so Ghost Train is not immune to Doom. And that's because of the fact that in the vanilla game, it's considered an undead boss. So when you flip the undead property, you 
instead of having it susceptible to being revivified, it is susceptible to being, you know, doomed or exoned or whatever. I don't know if it is or is not in the vanilla game. Um, that's something to look up, so might as well do that right now. And it looks like Search the Skies is yielding Knuckly Kong a Magicite Tritox, so he's our first runner to go ahead and search the sky. And it is Senor Behemoth at uh, the end of the minecart ride. So yeah, Ghost Train is undead, um, and he doesn't prevent the wound status. So since the wound status is normal for Ghost Train, uh, he can be instant death. Same thing with this second half of SR Behemoth. Right? You could use X-Zone on him in Worlds Collide with that undead property toggled off. Meanwhile, it is the Stooges in uh, Daryl's tomb here for Honeydew. You can read the inscription on the tomb to figure out what the reward will be before you get it. I didn't get to, a chance to see exactly what it was because I was looking at uh, Ghost Train's properties there. Good learning experience for all of us, I think. Knuckle Kong grabbing lock from uh, from the colon Jinin. And Mark gonna go ahead and do some Esper re-equipping re on his end. You actually don't need to use a sleeping bag or a tent at this save point, because you will get a story heal right before you fight this boss. So good heads up play for Mark here, and it is an Esper. Oh, it is calmness protection for Mark as soon as he gets past. Rasopas and the Piranhas, my favorite Final Fantasy VI punk band. And I believe that was Umaro at Daryl's Tomb. And Honey is going to go chase that Umaro right away to go up to the world of Ruin Narsh. Perhaps grab a dragon from there as well. And Knuckly Kong looks like he's going there, but he is doing it for a different reason because he just found Locke, and Locke unlocks the Norse Weapon Shop here, which gives us a chance to get an Esper, and we'll see if he bothers looking at the Curse Shield. About a half an hour into the run, it might be a little bit too late for a Curse Shield check, but you never know. If it's, you know, a 7 Battle Curse Shield, which is the current new minimum in Ultras League Season 6, maybe it is actually worth going to get. Meanwhile, Kefka in the sky, so that is what Knuckly Kong fought before. And it looks like it's a unicorn or a behemoth suit. Knuckly Kong wisely chooses the unicorn esper. That's another esper there for uh, for Honey. And that is the eighth esper there for Mark. So he's at four and eight. Fits at four and seven. Because he just got his uh, next esper from uh, Magitech Factory. Honeydew, our only runner with six characters right now, and that is Umaro. Unicorn has Mute on it, which is really nice for Knuckly. So that is from the Narsh Weapon Shop there. I didn't actually see what the Curse Shield count is, but since Knuckly Kong is equipping it, I would have to assume that it's probably near the minimum of seven. All right, Crane's down for Fitz. And that means he's going to get his 8th Esper here. Mark is going to get the ninth Esper. So this is the Esper that Fitz just got at Velt Cave. So Fitz and Mark have been going on similar paths. Meanwhile, Honeydew and Knuckly Kong have been going on similar paths, so it's definitely been a tale of two different seeds here thus far in this race. Which is really interesting. Uh, Renfell says 12 on the Curse Shield count. That's a bit high for my liking. But Knuckly Kong is deciding that he wants to do it, so uh, we'll see him do it. It will allow you to learn Ultima at a one times rate, so I can understand the appeal of doing it. For me, it's just a bit late in the seed to, to actually be uncursing a shield with a count that is that high.
Yeah, I don't know what Cyan is doing uh, for one free fifth. Somebody mentioned there might be a Valiant Knife in play. So Cyan is in the front row, which leads me to believe that he has one of those weapons on. Question from Utter Butter. Uh, so the Curse Shield, when you uncurse it, it becomes the Paladin Shield. And the Paladin Shield is what teaches you uh, Ultima, not the Curse Shield itself. So that is a slight correction to what I said. Meanwhile, it looks like both Knuckly Kong and Honeydew are going to go after their first dragon, which is in the top of Narsh, whereas the other runners went to do their dragon at Mount Zozo. And it's a Genji Glove as the drop for uh, the gold dragon here up in the top of Narsh. Can use that on, uh, on lock, because we do have that sniper weapon from the Colon Jin in the World of Ruin that we can use on lock, and lock with double snipers is very juicy. We'll see where Mark decides to go here. Let's take a look at his tracker. His only options are Opera House Disruption, Zozo, uh, not Zozo, Zone Eater, Floating Continent, and Kefka at Narsh, which is where it looks like he's going now to go take a peek. So if I'm Mark, I am not wanting to go to Floating Continent, but I'm dreading that my progression might have been there and I missed the boat on it. Esper there at the top of uh, Narsh at the Tritox spot for Honey. And it was Raiden, I believe. So speed plus two is really nice. Especially because Cyan is slow as hell. So let's put that on him. Fitz, meanwhile, getting to the end of the Magitek Factory. So he'll be at nine Espers here once he finishes off this fight. And it is leader at the Tritox spot. So this is what I missed Honey killing so fast. Not a character there at Kefka at Narsh, so Mark is going to take a reset. So his only options now are Floating Continent, Opera House Disruption, and Zone Eater. So we'll see where he decides to go. It looks like, based on the fact that he's at the airship party guy he's taking his party down to uh to one plurt person to head through to zone eater knuckly kong grabbing an esper there at try talk and we see um it's maybe a magicite at umaro's yeti cave i didn't quite see what it was but since Honeydew is not resetting out of here, either he didn't save, or uh, it is an Esper. Interesting fact about Dullahan, he is in fact a floating boss. Remember we were talking about floating versus not floating before with the veteran. Dullahan actually floats, even though it's a chariot. <laughs> I don't know, make it make sense, chat. So that's why you saw the lock sniper proc by saying that five times fast. Uh, coming out there for uh, for Dullahan. Dullahan is also weak to fire and pearl, even though it's a chariot on fire and it looks like an undead. And Mark is having a glorious time here <laughs> at Zone Eater. Knuckly Kong not having access to Umaro could not continue on in the world of Ruin Narsh, but he is going to head over to Mount Zozo here for a second dragon and... Going to pick up his Celeste. Meanwhile, one free fits uh, after grabbing Esper number nine there from Magitech Factory is doing the Opera House Disruption. So this is the other option for Mark that is not the Floating Continent. So, chat, do we think that we are going to get a character at either Zone Eater or Opera House Disruption or a Mark and one free fits going to have to go to the Floating Continent? Give me some of your predictions in the chat. All right, um, I guess it was just an item there at the Umaro spot because Honey is still at six and six according to his tracker. 
And oh, it's an Esper there at Zone Eater. Well, the good news for Mark is that he, one, has Warp Stones, and two, uh, you do get a skip with 12 Espers in uh, Ultra League, and he's well on his way to getting that. So, theory crafting in the chat, Dullahan is some form of apparition or ghost, which is why it's floating. I, I think I can get behind that sort of theory crafting, but it's, it's, it is a chariot, right? And chariots don't, don't fly. <laughs> Unless you're driving it really strangely. Alright, so Mark says, forget Opera House Disruption, I'm going to the Floating Continent. So at this point, if Mark does the whole Floating Continent, he doesn't know this, but unfortunately the second check is dead and he will not get his 12 espers that he might be looking for by going through all of Floating Continent here. And it's just Narappa at the Opera House Disruption. So Narappa is actually susceptible to instant death, but has the Reflect status. So you can't actually cast Doom on Narappa. You must use X-Zone or some other form of instant death. X for if you've unlocked the Magitek upgrade or uh, Roulette. <laughs> if you really want to roll the dice, if you have Lore. The ghostly flames propel it like a jetpack. Love the Dullahan theory crafting we got going on here. <laughs> Second dragon for Knuckly Kong, so that'll give him his Minerva. But more importantly, his sixth character, Celeste, is going to be at the end of this year. And let's see, Fitz is finally at the end of the Opera House disruption. Is this a character? No, it is not floating continent required for this seed tonight, folks. So a required spicy chicken and Umaro fight. It's just the dragon horn at Opera House Disruption as well. Oh no, it's a travesty. It's a disaster. Mark using bio on spicy chicken, which as I mentioned before is the actual weakness of Poltergeist, not ice. Which is weird, because it is a fire chicken. I think Ice 3 does a little bit less damage than Bio, but Bio costs half as much MP to summon. So it's definitely worth using Bio. It's better to use... Oh no, Launcher. <laughs> It's better to use defense ignoring attacks because Spicy Chicken has very high physical and magical defense. Looks like Fitz is disappointed by the fact that Kafkat Narsh is not his character. So is going to be forced into the floating continent here. So this was definitely one of those seeds where you had to go do floating continent. I mentioned it before at the very beginning of the stream that with a party with Gogo -Go and with Throw, you don't have a lot to be afraid of on the floating continent. I mean, this floating continent was particularly bad because there was there was Poltergeist. But with Throw, you can get through it. Yeah, cheap Pearl Rod there. Only 10,000. It's still more expensive than in the vanilla Final Fantasy VI because we felt that rods were so strong at their original price point that uh, we make all of them cost at least 10000 Floating Continent is the longest check in the game, bar none. However, with two guaranteed pieces of progression, it makes it very enticing and the fact that you can gain a lot of levels while you're here and make the subsequent bosses not a problem. The issue is, it just takes a very long time. And if you can't get past the first two bosses, then you've wasted a lot of time. And there it is. 
Mark knows it. His progression on the floating continent with Setzer there. Alright, so our bottom runners have already done the floating continent, and our top runners were pigeonholed into doing it. So you can see the levels on Mark's party, 36. That is Kefka Tower ready levels. So he's just looking for that next character. The interesting thing here, and this is going to be a point of discussion that I'll ask him during the interview. Would you consider warping out or getting out of the floating continent, short-circuiting here? Because you can't get a character at floating continent number two. You'd have to go all the way to the end. But Setzer has three really fast checks. Uh, two of them can be characters with Colin Janin. We know that that is Locke. And we also know that Daryl's Tomb is nothing. Right, so that is that is the way through this seed here. Um, so, or was Daryl's Tomb Umaro? Daryl's Tomb is Umaro. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if Mark decides to leave the floating continent. Because you could leave right after the second checkpoint, right before the second boss, right? Um... If it were me, wow, this is a tough call. Because if you were wrong and Setzer doesn't have a character at his checks, then it's woof. It's real bad. I think I would save at that save point there. I would leave the floating continent. I would go quickly to Kalinjin Inn, see if it's a character. Quickly go to Daryl's Tomb, see if it's a character. If not, reset back to that save point and finish the floating continent. I think that's what I would probably do if I was him in his situation. However, as pointed out in chat, he has 10 espers, so maybe he's thinking at the very least, I will get two more espers up here and that'll give me the skip. And then when I get off the floating continent, I just go grab my character right away and I'm done. So maybe that is what uh, the thought process is here behind Mark. Meanwhile, while we were... Uh, theory crafting and strategizing Honeydew is in go mode getting his last two espers there from Cyan's dream with three espers the real MVP of the seed besides the floating continent looks like he's going to take on a dragon here he's a bit far away from the 22 check skip so this is going to be a purely either level play or I need to learn some spells play for, uh, for Honey Yeah, so Mark's going to keep going. It makes sense after you do the second check, because the third check is guaranteed progression. So he's getting at least an Esper, which would help him towards Skip, or a character, which will put him in Go mode. So this completely makes sense for Mark here, to continue doing Floating Continent after doing the second one. I just am not sure if I would have short-circuited out after doing the first one, and done my save shenanigans, but... That's a that's a call that I would make and not necessarily Mark would make. But again, Mark is a really great runner. He is in Elixir, or will be in Elixir this season. Has been in Mega Elixir in the past. So he knows what he's doing. Alright, Knuckly Kong grabbing himself an Esper there from the Belt Cave. Honeydew grabbing some more levels there from that dragon and it looks like he'll probably be ready to go into uh, Kefka's tower here. And there it is, the Magi Master at the end of the floating continent. Mark thankfully has learned Berserk so we're gonna see a much less intimidating Magi Master fight than what Honey and Knuckly had to do uh, earlier on here. Yeah, so the levels of Honey are were before that dragon in the lower end of the 30s. So for Kefka's Tower, you want to be probably mid-30s when you go in here. You'll gain some levels on the climb, but uh, you want to be at least a little above 35 before you fight Final Kefka. And Shadow now at 36, I just saw on his team, so... Yeah, sometimes you have to get a little creative with the strats that you want to use. And, you know, 
One of the things that makes this game really fun and interesting is that it's more about your game knowledge and your strategy than about your pure execution. Guaranteed, uh, you do need execution. If you don't do the fights the proper way or do them correctly, then you will lose time. But you can approach Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide in many different ways because it is not a key item hunt. It is go get a number of characters and espers if you go. So Mark checking there, just making sure. He needs one more esper for go mode. So this is another one of these situations where we have searched the skies. It is fairly easy and we can go do that. We also have the Tritox spot, which is open to uh, anybody. It's not character gated. And that is an Esper item check, so this makes sense here. It also makes sense to go take lock and just go grab the Narsh weapon shop for your go mode and potentially your skip, because his levels are already high enough. He doesn't need to fight any more fights. And that's going to be Kefka Tower skip for Mark here. So even though Honeydew got go mode first, Mark, by finishing out the floating continent, getting that Esper, and then by getting Locke for free, and then the Esper for free, he's actually going to be ahead of Honey, and he's got more levels than Honey does. So Mark is definitely in, I would say, the lead here. It depends on what is in Kefka's tower, and how the party composition is designed. Yeah, so question from the chat, have there been any encounters with the Doom Gaze tile? So, when you get Setzer, when you recruit him, you can actually choose to fight the Doom Gaze check by doing the Search the Skies command. And what you can do, as Fitz actually short-circuited off of the Floating Continent, so he did the thing that I was talking about there as he gets his go mode. Um, so with Setzer, you could actually choose to Search the Skies and fight the Doom Gaze spot. So our bottom runners who got Setzer way earlier on in the seed were able to search the skies for the Doom Gaze spot. It was Kefka at Narsh and it did drop an Esper, I believe. So that could have been an option for uh, our characters. And there it is, Knuckly Kong suplexing the train. Race is over, GG's. Your winner is Knuckly Kong for suplexing the train there. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Mark catapulting ahead of Honeydew, so we're going to go back and we're going to switch the audio back to, uh, to Mark here. Meanwhile, Fitz is at 6 and 9, I believe. Yes, he's at 6 and 9. So we'll see if he decides to go for some more espers. I don't think he will, considering three espers is a bit of a stretch. So he'll be behind, uh, he'll be behind Honey here. So Kafka's Tower Skip saves at least three minutes of walking, and then however long it takes you to defeat the Inferno boss spot. So it depends on what that is. So sometimes it's like five minutes, sometimes it's seven minutes, but I think it's like three to four minutes of walking and then another minute or two of fighting a boss. So depending upon how bad that boss is, like, Mark is fighting against Welk here, and this is just a waste of time for him. Because this is not a threat, it's just really annoying because Welk goes in his Gru hole. Meanwhile, so let's take a look at our offenses here. Honey has Cyan with Fixed Ice, just single throwing, and Locke with the Genji Glove and the Snipers. He probably has Shadow doing throw and then Celeste doing magic, which is what Mark also has. I'm not quite sure what Mark, what the rest of Mark's party is doing, how he's rounded it out. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Honey doesn't have Celeste. So Honey might be doing go-go with throw still. I wasn't really paying attention that well to what the party composition is. Yeah, because we have Cyan doing magic here, which is usually not a good thing. 
Although single throwing dice can be infuriating because it's it's very varied as to what you could actually do. Meanwhile, Mark taking down uh, number 128, but Honeydew actually I think has passed Mark again. It's super duper close between the two of them. So even with the skip, I think Honeydew, even with less levels, has more consistent offense because he's not relying on, you know, disgusting things like Cyan using magic. Meanwhile, Knuckly goes out of Magitech Factory, decides to warp out, and checks to Zen Thief, and he'll get his go mode in just a second here as well. Drinks Glue Raiden with a party of one. What up, Drinks Glue? How are you? Hopefully you're doing all right. Knuckly Kong getting his go mode there. Just shortly after. So this is a super duper close race. All right, so here's number 24. And uh-oh. <laughs> ruh -ro, it's our level check. Okay, so this is going to be a problem for Mark. Because remember, Mark's party is at level 40. So this Doom Gaze is going to present lots of problems here for, uh, <laughs> for, for Mark when he gets there. Alright, so number 24 can be a big problem if he decides to use Overflow and confuse your one really good party member. But it looks like Mark is just cruising through that fight there. Gets through that statue. Meanwhile, Knuckly Kong is actually doing South Figure okay. This is a check that we haven't seen, actually. Uh, and it is Vanilla Tunnel Armor. Very interesting. And it looks like Knuckly Kong has found an offering somewhere to use with Setzer with that fixed ice. And there goes, there goes Tunnel Armor. All right, so Mark now sees the bad news that it is Doom Gaze. So time to get Celeste back up because Celeste was level forty, remember? And there's an Edgar at South Figaro Cave, and Doomgaze being a bully. See, this is this this is why Doomgaze is one of the more annoying bosses in the game. You can get into this this hole of you know just constantly being doomed, and thankfully that one missed, where you're constantly having to dig yourself out of this hole. And the worst thing is that Doomgaze is really high magical offense, uh, defense rather. So, oh, there's another character, Gao, on the Figaro throne with lore. So, Knuckly Kong is playing Pokemon. He's not playing Final Fantasy VI. He's trying to catch them all. Little does he know that his favorite character, Umaro, is actually at Daryl's tomb. So, if he goes to Daryl's tomb right now, <laughs> he'll be in skip mode with character skip. One free fits, meanwhile, just beyond where you would where Knuckly Kong would be skipping to. And uh-oh, Overflow comes out, and thankfully Gogo hits himself. Whew, that could have been bad. Meanwhile, Mark using Flare on Doom Gaze, because remember what I said, Doom Gaze, very high magical defense. So Flare will cut through that magical defense like a hot knife through butter. And hopefully Mark can hang on and defeat Doomgaze here. Because Honeydew just took down number 24. And that was his last boss before Final Kefka. Meanwhile, Fitz is at the very top of the middle group here with uh, the Poltergeist spot.
Alright, so Knuckly Kong has decided that I've got enough characters now. I got my whole crew. And some. One hour and 35 seconds is the switch's time. There for, uh, for Honey. So Honey will be our first person going up against Final Kafka, even though he actually was behind Mark when Mark got to his skip. So I think that is just a combination of this Doom Gaze fight taking a very long time because of some unlucky ill-timed dooms and Honeydew's offense being slightly better with uh, with having access to that dual sniper and um, and the fixed ice. But, and all that matters is the final Kafka fight here, folks. So, I need your predictions in the chat. How long do you think this final Kafka fight is going to last? And we're starting at 1.01.27. Uh, we do have access to Mute. We have Instant Death. I think some of our runners have Fenrir. I, I know I saw it somewhere. I don't remember where I saw it. That might have been our Search the Skies thing. Or it might have been at the end of the Floating Continent. Oh, not the Floating Continent, the Magitek Factory. So, I'm going to go with uh, 8 minutes and 2 seconds here for Honeydew's final Kafka. We do have Fire 3, and we do have Instant Death, but I'm worried about the fixed ice, and I'm worried about Calmness. Utter Butter confirming Fenrir was Magitek, I'm pretty sure. So that is an advantage that Mark is going to have over Honey, is that Mark went all the way through the Magitek factory, so he has access to Calmness Protection, whereas Honey Dudes is not. However, Honey is already uh, on the Balled Up Fist, so almost done with Tier 1. I might have used uh, some Water Edge with Shadow there, uh, instead of the Fire Magic, is that Balled Up Fist is actually weak to Water. And one of the only sources of water you have in Worlds Collide is that elemental water edge. You could also use lore and, and dance and, uh, and rage, but your most consistent form of water is going to be that water edge. Meanwhile, Mark stepping up to the plate. Final Kafka at 10303. So that is a difference of about a minute and a half. So a 90 second difference between our corner runners here. We'll see if Mark can catch up and surpass Honey. Because Honey looks like he's got to do some recovery there. Sets her getting a bop right in the face. Exo not connecting with Mark. So it comes down to execution and RNG here in this final fight, folks, to see who can outlast who. Mark getting one of the parts down is going to go ahead. That face is weak to fire, and we want to get rid of it first. Meanwhile, Honey, out of Tier 1, as Knuckly Kong is uh, continuing to do some checks here. So maybe he's going to do Toilet Atma and the two dragons to get his skip into the middle. All right, Tier 2 for Honey. I believe we have access to Mute. So he's going to go ahead and take care of magic there. There you go. And then he's going to use instant death on tools, because tools is susceptible to instant death. And then the tiger face is weak to ice. So with ice too, that tiger shouldn't last too long. So this tier actually is going to be not that big of a problem for honey. As Mark's shadow gets punched in the face there. So Mark not having access to fire three, this first here is actually taking a bit longer than uh, than Honeydews. Fitz taking down his last boss there, number 24, and he's going to be ready for Final Kefka as well. So he'll probably be in about 105, 45, something like that. So he'll be about 2 minutes and 45 seconds behind Mark, who was 90 seconds behind Honey to start this fight. There it is, end of Tier 1 for Mark, Cle creeping on up to Tier 2. One way to get better at this game is to, number one, wow, 
Little little 13k damage there from Locke, getting two procs with the sniper. One way uh, is to just practice, and at, at some point you'll get there. It's more important to just practice as many seeds as possible than to try and go for you know best times and reset when you have a failure. You'll learn more, I think, playing seeds that are quote unquote worse, where you have to do more with less, than playing a seed that's sort of a jet seed and you get a really nice time. So I, I understand the grind to get a good time because we are speedrunners after all and that's sort of, you know, in our lexicon is what is your fastest completion time. But for consistency and for something like Ultras League, practicing lots of different kinds of seeds is going to be much more beneficial to you overall in the long run. And unfortunately for Mark, what would be beneficial for him right now is for x to not miss <laughs> for the third time here. Ten hits coming out. I think this is for Honeydew. So he's got only one part of the boss left. And that is magic. And magic has been muted. But uh-oh. Celeste confused for Mark. This can be a disaster. Thankfully, uh, hit obliges. Thank you very much, hit. And uh, we'll get rid of uh, that confused status. Meanwhile, one free fits. Uh, using that fixed dice with the rage from uh, from Setzer there. Knuckly Khan taking on the red dragon. So this was one of the dragons in Kefka's tower here. Oh, another X-Zone miss. Wow. And Gogo -Go has been turned into a zombie as well. So just tier two. Just remember when I said, oh, tier two is not going to be a big deal. Uh, that is a commentator curse. I apologize to both Mark and Honey there. Honey finally getting out of tier 2. Mark, will your X-Zone please connect for the love of all that is Kefka? <laughs> so it looks like Gao actually has lore with Grand Train, so that's what Knuckly is going to be using on this. And we got Fixed Ice Offering for one free fit, so that's taking care of tier 1, and he's going up to tier 2 as well. Meanwhile, tier 3 for Honeydew, and X-Zone still does not connect. So, if X if you don't have X-Zone, or if it doesn't connect after a couple of times, Tools is also weak to lightning spells and water spells. So if you really have to, use your Bolt 3 on Tools if, if X-Zone is just not connecting. Gogo -Go goes down again for Mark there. Just really bad X-Zone luck. Meanwhile, Honeydew throwing the snipers at tier 3 here. He's looking to steal that Ragnarok. Getting a little greedy. Honeydew has to be careful because we are going to be going to Meteo phase very soon and uh oh Locke is down let's get him back up as soon as possible Locke is Honeydew's primary source of can I do more than 10,000 damage a turn and that is of course only if both of those things proc X-Zone giving one free fits fits uh <laughs> I probably should have timed that one a little bit better. Um, but yes, X-Zone not behaving in this fight for any of our uh, any of our runners. Alright, we are on the precipice. Here comes Medio. Cyan with a clutch block, because he's got pretty low HP. Now, out comes a flame shield, because Honeydew has to break through the 10,000 damage barrier in order to get to Calmness. Let's see what happens here. Setzer taken away. Oh no, and Locke taken away too! It's a disaster! Oh no. Oh no. Alright, well, let's see if Honey has the horses in the fight to take care of Final Kefka with two of his four party members gone. That is no bueno. Mark is still on Tier 2 as a result of all of those X-Zones missing. And Fitz has caught up to him on Tier 2, but I believe Mark 
just has maybe one or two parts left in this particular fight. Meanwhile, Doomgaze takes care of Gogo -Go in a hurry, and Shadow with a clutch block there, thank goodness. Oh, and we got Umaro in the final fight too, this is especially bad. One of the things about Umaro in the final fight is uh, Kefka likes to use counterattacks when he gets under 30,000 HP. Uh, Kefka will start countering with things like Hyperdrive and Havoc Wing. When he gets under 10,000 HP, he'll counter with things like uh, Ultima. So, Umaro is very dangerous because he could proc Kefka's counterattacks when you don't want him to. Swag Steel of the Mega Elixir there for Honeydew on Final Kafka. So if you don't have a Mega Elixir from your travels, you can go actually steal one from Final Kafka. And unfortunately, Knuckly Kong gets hit with a Doom on his Shadow, and that's going to be a reset. Mark finally getting out of Tier 2 there. On to Tier 3. And remember, he has Calmness Protection. So he's going to go into this fight with a full party. Honey, taking his time here, throwing whatever he can at Kafka. And by throwing, I mean actually throwing. Alright, so here comes the charge up for Goner. He will not counter attack during this phase of his battle script. Umaro is probably going to die and that's not going to be necessarily a bad thing. He's got no more elemental shields to throw, unfortunately. He had to use it to get through the uh, Medio phase of Tier 3. Remember, you can't get to Final Kafka if you die in Tier 3. So I think it's fine that he used his uh, his shield there. But now he's going to have to be smart because Goner is going to come out and Kafka is able to use counterattacks here. And he will attack up to twice per turn. And Humaro is not dead. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no, I thought Umaro was going to die on Goner. This is very risky here, because like I said, this is ca prime counterattack phase for Kefka. There comes the Havoc Wing, and there goes... There goes Cyan. So, Honey is going to risk it. We'll see if he could punch through. Is this enough damage to do it? Yes! Yes it is! 1, 13, 12 is the final time for Honey. Get your GG's in chat for Honey. Oh my goodness. Edge of the seat there. As we now have Mark heading up to Final Kafka. Outlasting uh, the third tier. But wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Here comes one free Fitz right up behind Mark there. Wow, Fitz has done a lot to catch up. Remember, he was two and a half minutes behind the start of this fight. And we're joined by Honey, tonight's winner. Honey, after your uh, PB uh, from the race on uh, Speed Gaming, this one not exactly a uh, sub 110, but I think you had a really good time with this one. How did you feel about this race? Yeah, I feel pretty good for the most part, but the mistakes that I made were extremely silly mistakes. So, like, I flew around the world looking for warp stones and even did Colosseum for warp stones, but the very first magic site I got had the warp spell on it. <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie doodles. Yeah, I saw a couple of our runners looking for them. They were in uh, World of Balance to Zen, I believe, was where some of them were, which is also where that really cheap Esper was, so... Maybe people emptied their pockets for that and forgot about the uh, the warp stones. Uh, yeah, I think I got mine from World of Ruin Collingen. I think Fitz skipped the goner phase, or rather the, the Fallen One phase, uh, with the fixed ice and offering, so he was able to find the offering. You were just using single fixed ice. No calmness protection. That was a bit uh, a bit interesting there at the end for, uh, for you. Yeah, the... I was saying, like, okay, if I don't block the calmness, at least, at least let it be a single calmness. Nope, it was a double. 
always got to be a double and one free fits one 15 19 is our second finisher here absolutely blazing past mark in this final fight he almost caught up to you <laughs> as well so get your ggs for fits in chat i think that's the power of the offering had you have the offering maybe that would have been a lot easier of a pill to swallow uh getting through your your kefka tiers especially i didn't think tier two was going to be that big of a problem but it turns out that i was wrong yeah the uh not exactly the strongest party i've ever had but i was pretty happy we'll be cobbled together like it, it was good enough yeah never found a big weapon for Locke, but you know i went to coal engine twice to get that second sniper when i got the genji glove but uh yeah, where was the offering? That would have come in handy. Uh, I don't actually know. I know that both Fitz and Knuckly Kong found it. So the answer might be from a dragon somewhere, or it might have been in a monster in a box that they check. I don't actually remember. Maybe if chat can help me out. Um, watching four screens at once is a bit of a bit of a conundrum. <laughs> um, so yeah, you mentioned a few a few minor mistakes there. Uh, anything that you think you did really well in this particular run here? Uh, and was the answer going to the floating continent as soon as you could? Uh, yeah, funny enough, the only reason I went floating continent so soon was because I thought I didn't have warp, even though I had the, the magic spell warp. Yeah. But there was a chance that... I don't actually know for sure if it was the first magicite I got it. Oh no, yeah, yeah, it would have been one of the first ones, because when I was leaving Floating Continent, I had it. So, uh, yeah. De definitely regret that that mistake, but the route ended up working out okay. But I think what I did well is, you know, with what I had, I was able to put together some good offense, and even though it was unconventional team and unconventional offense, you know, I was able to get through the fights fine. Uh, th throw carried for a bit, but getting the rest of the characters online was a bit of a hassle. Yeah, so it's interesting that you say that not having Warp Stone sort of pulled you towards Floating Content and away from some of the other checks. Mark and One Free Fits, unfortunately, that is where their last location of their character was. So we're joined by Mark as well. GG Mark, that was a really well done seed, despite having to, uh, you know, you made unfortunately the wrong choice there by fading uh, Floating Continent towards the beginning of the seed. Yeah, thanks, Schmantz. Uh, GG, honey. GG's. Yeah, I chose. I intentionally chose not to go to Floating Continent, and at the end, I was intentionally avoiding it as well. So I wasted time. I went and checked Kefka at Narsh. That wasted a little bit of time. I was just hoping I didn't have to go there. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you make that decision, you're gonna die on that hill, right? So. <laughs> yeah. It's it's one of those things where it's just it's unlucky because I, I know that I, I was talking about it as soon as we saw, as soon as we loaded up the seed and saw. Throw and go go. My comment was, when are these runners going to floating continent? You think you have enough firepower to deal with almost anything? Uh, Honey had to use a few pearl rods on <laughs> spicy chicken. I know that that was a bit of a hassle for you early on, and later on, spicy chicken spells get really way more formidable for so for you, Mark. And we're joined also by one free fits. GG fits on your second place finish there. Way to. Uh, Way to just blaze through Final Kefka. You actually went into the Kefka fight third and ended up finishing second. I think in part because, Mark, you had horrific luck on <laughs> Tier 2. With, I think, with I think that was six X-Zones that missed. Yeah, I think that is that is the most I've ever seen. I've gotten five before and threw my controller through a wall, so I can't imagine what six is like. But anyway, awesome job, Fitz, on uh, that really fast Kefka fight. GG's to you. Yeah, thank you. It was a, I mean, it was a fast one overall. At one point, I was like, "Ooh, am I about to PB on stream big time?" Because I was getting real close to unlock, and I was feeling pretty good about my squad power level wise. But then I just like couldn't find a character. Uh, I'll have to watch. I'll be curious on the watch back. Who? Well, what was in Zone Eater? Was there a character in there? Nope. There was Esper. an Esper in there. And Kefka at Norsh, both of you guys peaked, was nothing. 
So, and I know, Mark, you did not go to Opera House. Fitz did, and it was not a character. So, it was a floating continent required seed tonight. Um, which is unfortunate for the two of you, because you put that off to the end, right? And I think part of it was you guys found at least some form of warp zones early to get out of Mount Zozo, and you found Celeste relatively early on and chased down Celeste's checks for no characters, right? Which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, I actually thought I had warp zones, but then I discovered that I never bought them, and so I had to walk out of... <laughs> I, so, I so. also had the walk of shame. Yeah, yeah. I mistakenly thought I had to walk of shame. Turns out I had to warp spell since, like, the beginning of the seed. It might have been that Ifrit spell that Tazen Thief was selling was super juicy. I think that was... Between that and the throw, it was sort of off to the races until you guys got into, like, those, those walls and, uh... That was just a bit bit unfortunate there for sure i know at 30 minutes i was planning like oh i'm gonna i could hit unlock at like 35 to 40 i'm gonna do a full clear on the right lane because i'm really low leveled and i just couldn't find the last guys oh was that natural magic warp it had to it have, must been. have been sets oh, i think sets are at natural magic right yeah which unfortunately you get if you go to the floating continent <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, okay. Okay, so I didn't make a mistake. No, I know I was good. There you okay, go. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Re Redemption. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting yeah, I mean... how little things like that will lead to route, route differences, right? If, you do, if you're like, hey, I don't have Warp Stones, I don't do Mount Zozo, I'm going to do Floating Continent, and that is the way through the seed, whereas, you know, other runners did not do that. It's kind of... It's kind of crazy how even such a small little thing will, will do that. Go ahead, Fitz. Yeah, it was like, I don't know. I thought about going there a couple of times. I was having similar thoughts. I was like, I'm about to unlock this real early. But I had found there was like a, a uh, what are they called? A veteran D a Daedalus fight yeah. outside of Doma. So I like noted that. I was like, I'm going to come back here uh, and grind this if I got to Get I got that grind fight real too. fast. That um, was a good grind fight. Yeah, go, yeah, up, that to, was... go up to level nine as soon as that one fight is done, right? So there was definitely some fortunate things that fell into place that made this kind of a fast from the get go. I, I'm definitely proud of. I was I was pushing the pace. I had to keep telling myself like, no, don't go check any more shops. Like, no, stop. Don't open that chest. Um, you know what's really and interesting? You know, when it's this close, like, mm -hmm. you, you, it could have easily been anyone's race, so yeah. I was pretty happy with my performance. Yeah. Um, yeah, the three of you were fighting Kafka at the same time, basically, at the end. Mark got very unlucky with X-Zone, <laughs> and yep. uh, Fitz, you got very lucky with your dice rolls, right? So that's that that could happen. Where did you find the fixed dice, honey? Because I, I forgot that it was actually in Mount Zozo, was where most of the runners found their dice. Um, where did I get dice? Might have been in Daryl somewhere. Okay. Oh, it might have been off the beaten path on Daryl's tomb. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I think you were the only runner that did that, because nobody else had Zumaro. Yeah, and I was also like, is it worth me to take the time to check to see if Setzer has a rage that multiplies damage? And sure enough, like, Doberman was right at the top, so I was like, good enough, let's <laughs> go ahead and do that. <laughs> like, that that paid off in, in the Kefka fight, although it was, it was kind of scary at times, too. Like, it's, it's definitely, like, not only the low rolls, which we saw, I saw trip ones, so oh, that was yeah. yep. pretty pretty great but it's actually the high ones that are scary it's like if sets are hit procs bite and he rolls high on all of his dice he could easily like yeah, make something happen weight counter right on tier one yeah um, tier one i was definitely worried about and then tier three less because i had a couple mirage vests so i was like well worst case we can make it through so 
Yeah, so question for you, Mark. Um, you go up to the floating continent when you had, I believe, five characters and ten espers, and you see Setzer at the first check. Did you ever have thoughts of, I'm getting the hell off the floating continent and doing Setzer's two really fast checks to see if they're a six character, or were you committed to doing all the floating continent at that point? My thought process at that point was the last check of floating continent is either an Esper or a character for sure. If it's an Esper, I'm at 11 Espers and I need one more for skip. If it's a character, I have my characters. So I might as well do both because if the middle check is an Esper as well, I have skip there. Yeah, I, yeah, that makes total sense. I, I was trying to, you know, theory craft. What if we save at the save point? get off the floating continent, go do Setzer's two checks, and if it's not a character, then reset to the save on the floating continent and finish it out. But with with your sort of loadout with ten espers there, it definitely made sense to just keep going. Whereas Fitz, I think you got the heck off the island as soon as you finished the second check, right? Well, yeah, if that one was an esper, I was probably going to go to the end. Mm-hmm hoping that that was another esper and then it was like oh i can search the skies for 12 real fast but when it was dead i was like yeah no we're getting out of here and we'll hit setzer's checks especially because celeste didn't have any characters it was like setzer's gotta have one um <laughs> i mean it didn't have to there could have been two on the continent that would have been yeah. rip but uh <laughs> setzer had the two. odds were in in the favor, and I, I, that was the other thing. I was like, I wonder if, if, if someone did here go go here early and then follow that. I wondered if that led to like a slower path ultimately, like going to, if it was a Umaru and then following that. But right. it sounds like that was like character six anyway. So yeah, so Setzer had Umaru and Daryl's tomb, and then you guys both found the lock, and then. Locke gives Edgar at South Figaro Cave, and then Edgar gives Gao at Throne, and that's about as far as we got down the line there. So you could get nine characters in the seat if you really wanted to. It's just uh, unfortunate that it was sort of gated behind one of the longer checks in the game, especially when you start with throw and go-go. You're like, yes, I'm just going to go as fast as humanly possible here. Um, okay. So we'll do final thoughts, last words. Honey, um, you are going to be in Elixir, I believe, this season coming up. Um, so what are you looking forward to? And uh, any other thoughts on this race or the Ultras League in general? I'm just excited for Elixir. It is most insanely stacked Elixir. Yeah. It's like... Like, every now and then I'll remember, like, another person that's an elixir, and I'm like, oh, I gotta worry about him. Gotta worry about him. Gotta worry about them. Gotta worry about... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, it, I, it, I it, somehow it, clawed my way out of Mega Elixir, just... Or out of Elixir into Mega Elixir, just to get thrown back down next season. So I, I'm I'm not looking forward to... When, when you get to these levels, it's... If you make one mistake, then that you're going from either, like, second or third down to six. There's just... It's very unforgiving, unfortunately, when you get to the higher levels of, of the league. Yeah, and speaking of Mega Elixir, I'm dying to know the question on everybody's mind. Who's gonna beat Falcon Hit? Somebody gotta do it. Should I just do meme routes all see all season and see if I could uh <laughs> see if I could dethrone? That would be hilarious. Yeah, do whatever you gotta do. Elite River first Some every time. <laughs> Yeah, somebody gotta beat him. Harry King has to lose the crown at some point. Absolutely. But meanwhile, I'm just gonna be fighting a barely surviving elixir because uh, these boys are coming hot this season. Yep. But um, yeah. Final thoughts on the seed. I do have to point out what my favorite moment of the seed was when I decided to do. This, this one actually is a two tier one. When I decided to do Coliseum for warp stones because I was that desperate. <laughs> if I, there's no Iron Fist guy I could kill in one hit. Oh, that he does fight. stone. Yeah, that was amazing. He confuses me and I flare myself. That was that was incredible. <laughs> and then the second tier is 
after I got the warp stones, I go to Kolingen, and Kolingen has warp stones in the item shop. Yep, yep, the classic. Because that's just a classic Rose Collide moment. But yeah, GG's to all the racers. Uh, thanks to once for hosting the race, and see y'all at Ultra League. Can't wait till Sunday. Yeah, no I think problem. it's our Sunday. Uh, April, what is it here? April 6th. So, that's in a couple of couple of Sundays. So, signups are still open until the first week of April. So, we've got a couple of weeks left still to get your signups in. Um, well, dang, I thought it was starting this week. Unfortunately, you still got time to practice. So. Oh, yeah, plenty of time to practice. Yeah. Anybody so, wants to race anytime, hit, hit me up in the Discord. Yeah, so I'll race anybody anytime. Thank you for volunteering to be on, on stream and for the race. So appreciate it and good luck this season. We'll be seeing you later for sure. Uh, Thank you. Fitz, yeah, any, GG's other, it, uh, any other final thoughts? I think you will also be in Elixir this season. Finishing, yep, third, hanging out. finishing third in Elixir A last season. Yeah, I've been on the cusp of getting out a couple times in a row. So. <laughs> It took me five seasons, so... <laughs> it, sometimes <laughs> been, you gotta pay I, your dues. <laughs> I feel like I've I've had a nice off-season that I've been working on my game. Um, so, I'm definitely excited. I am also excited for uh, our Randosan race coming up, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Friday. Uh, Friday. Oh, it is Friday. It's at yes, like seven. It's, isn't it's, it? the it's the 29th at seven fifty Eastern, right? So the, it's it's kind of at a weird time, but it's Friday. It's Friday night anyway in the uh, in the East Coast. So yeah, that'll be a good time. And you know, final thought: if throw and magic power plus Esper, then go as fast as you can, and good things happen. So you, you started talking in code there at the end, so I appreciate that. And uh, <laughs> I appreciate you volunteering to be on Restream. So again, thank you so much, and good luck this upcoming season. Um, thank you. Good night. All right, and last, Mark. So any other final thoughts? I think you'll also be in Elixir this season, finishing third, I think, in Elixir B last season. One point behind uh, the second place contestant yep there. me peril and shocker had a back and forth battle the whole time i'm happy to be an elixir i was up in mega elixir for one season and it is stressful <laughs> <laughs> great that's what i have to look forward to thanks thanks for that <laughs> every race yeah uh final thoughts i'm looking forward to ultos league this seed was just pure magic i the only often the physical type offense was the fixed dice and i didn't even feel like using it right but yeah thanks for hosting it's Always fun. Yeah, there was uh, Locke with Double Sniper, if you found Locke early enough, which you obviously didn't. Because um, you could buy them right from the Collingen shops. Oh. So you could you could do that, and that would have been really cool and really nice. But, you know, you, you and Fitz both found him very, very late. So it is what it is. Yep. Yeah, it just shows that a lot of these races can just come down to luck. Yeah, Orange Jesus was not on your side. Set out some crystals in the moonlight or something, please. I never want to see <laughs> that X Zone shenanigans ever again. <laughs> yeah. So thank you also for volunteering to be on Restream. Can't have the races out the runners. And uh, good luck this upcoming season. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one of these. Thanks. Good luck to you too. Take care. All right. See you later. Okay. So Knuckly Kong on tier two, dealing with ten hits. And I think all we have left is Magic, and unfortunately he does not have Mute. And Magic decided, hey, I'm going to stick around for multiple fights, essentially. <laughs> Giving himself Life 3, which is never any fun. Hopefully we'll get rid of Magic fairly quickly. The good thing about Life 3 is it only actually revives your... It only revives the person for one-eighth of their HP. And Magic has 40,000 HP. So when Magic comes back up after being Life 3'd, they only have 5,000 HP. So it might only take another turn or two in order to get rid of Magic. It's not like they get their full HP pool back.
Yeah, so for Ultras League, um, question in the chat is... Uh, if we sign up for Ultras League, if we can't run at the specified time due to work or life, uh, is there a way to just play the seed on stream for proof and use that? So Ultras League is run in an asynchronous fashion. What that means is every week a race room is opened up for that particular division and you join the race room, you download that particular seed, and you run it whenever you feel like it. You do have to record a run with a timer for proof. Uh, and the timer is kind of optional because one of the admins can always retime your race anyway. But you uh, do your run whenever you can and have your run recorded. And then you'll submit your time in the race room. And that opens up a sort of spoiler chat once you open up, once you've put your time in. So after you put your time in and the spoiler chat opens, you could then discuss the seed with the other runners in your division that ran that same race. So it's a really good way to share strategies, uh, talk smack if you're in uh, <laughs> one of the higher divisions. I I'm totally kidding, by the way. Or not, am I? Um, you know, talk smack, get some knowledge sharing. It's a really good way also to meet people who are around your skill level and you know, you'll compete and grow with these same players that are in your particular divisions as well. Um, I think they start on Saturday at like noon and you have until Saturday at noon, the pre or noon Eastern to finish your run. So if you are, you know, let's say going to be busy on a certain day a week, then you know, okay, I could run my seed on Tuesday this week and be fine. Also, if you're going to be busy or out of town or just unavailable for whatever reason during a particular week, don't worry. Your two lowest times actually get dropped. So only the top six of your eight week times count. So you could essentially just not run one week and your zero point run will be dropped by the end. So there's a lot of flexibility with Ultros League. So even if you're like somewhat hesitant about signing up, um, Sign up. If you're new, you'll get be you'll be placed in the tonic division alongside other newer runners to the game, people that haven't uh, yet actually um, done any ultra sleek seeds. So that's the division that everybody starts in, and you get to learn from all of the people in your division. And the time commitment is only you know two or three hours per week, depending upon how long it is your race runs and. You can always skip weeks if you're not feeling up to it or life gets in the way. So I think it's pretty flexible in that manner. Um, your, only, your highest six times are the only ones that count anyway. So. All right, so Knuckly in a bit of trouble here. He's got to start killing... Did he kill... I think he believe. I believe he killed Girl. Yes. So Girl is down, thankfully. The boss won't heal itself, but he's got to heal his own party. And I think he's got just that one X potion left. And his only healing spell is just Single Cure. Now, Single Cure might do the job. If you single target, it'll heal you for maybe a thousand if you're lucky. Okay, we do have Cure too as well. Setzer, I think, was the one with the fixed ice in the offering, so we should get Setzer back up before we go into the Meteo phase, because he has the damage to get past that Meteo threshold, if you will. Yeah, so thanks everybody in chat for jumping in on the, uh, the info to confirm it with me as well. About Ultras League, anyway. Um, so if you visit the website, uh, ultrasleague.com, you could also see all of the other rules, but I, I think I summed up most of them there. All right, so here comes the Meteo phase, and now Knuckly has to do some damage to push through this, and uh-oh. Locke ends up going down here. So, Sleep can counter any attack with Meteo, and he has a chance to do Meteo on his turn. Uh, Narv says Knuckly is out of Phoenix Downs. Okay, that makes sense as to why Setzer is dead. And why everybody is dead. And oh no, Cyan is now dead! 
And that is unfortunately going to be a forfeit there for Knuckly. That is, uh, that's awful. You hate to see it happen, folks. All right, and we are joined by Knuckly Kong. Unfortunately, did not have the horses to push through there at the end. I believe you were also out of Phoenix Downs, if I'm reading the chat correctly. Yep, yep, I was out of Phoenix Downs. I was out of pretty much all healing. Yep, when you're using single cure, that is never a good time. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, it was not the way I was hoping it would end, um, suffering the unfortunate wipe to Doom Gaze. Yeah. Um, overall, I feel like it was a good seed. Um, I just, I didn't have the offense to finish it. Hmm. Um, yeah, I was I, wondering what, what you were doing towards the end of the seed. Just, were you playing Pokemon there, gathering all the characters? <laughs> um, I was actually looking for Calmness Protection. Oh, that makes total sense. And I was hoping that the, the quick three checks would, uh, lead to another Esper that had some sort of Calmness Protection for me. Yeah, so I think our our top runners, uh, Mark and One Free Fitz, uh, they found Calmness Protection in Fenrir at the end of the Magitek factory, whereas you and Honeydew decided to go out to the floating continent earlier in the seed. So that was the choice between, do I go to this three-part check or do I go to that three-part check? And on the one hand, you had to go to the floating continent to finish the seed, because if you didn't, you couldn't get your sixth character. So good on you for choosing that right path. But it came with a price, and the price was no calmness protection there. Yep, and I contemplated doing Magitek 3, but at the end of it, I I didn't want to dedicate that much time to it. Because mm -hmm. that, that you uh, got your go mode at the second spot. So. Yep, especially with uh, running against racers of this caliber, I knew playing it safe would not end up in my favor um they are all in higher divisions than i am and i was yep they're all elixir bound this season i was hoping to hang with them and i i feel like if i would have made a couple different routing choices my time would have been better and then also you know the the doom gaze in the tower wasn't great yeah, Doomgaze in the tower definitely bit Mark pretty hard because he was at level 40 when he jumped in at the skip. So his his big character got knocked down and then got doomed the second time. Yeah, and I can understand totally the pressure of, well, I know that everybody else is going to go fast. And you were keeping pace with everybody for the most part until we got to uh, we got to Kefka's tower. And that's when sort of the Doomgaze had the bottom fall out underneath you for sure. Yep, but overall, so you can rest was, easy knowing that at least you kept up with everybody for a while. That does make me feel a little bit better. Um, also, I had controller issues during the seed. Yeah, uh, I saw that um, too. <laughs> in in Narsh, where I just kind of froze in the shop menu, my controller stopped working. So then I switched to my wired controller, but the button mapping is not the same. Mm. So I was hitting the buttons on the Super Nintendo controller that I needed to, and they are not mapped correctly. So I have to Ugh. remap those. Yeah. Well, now you know. Make sure you charge your controller before you uh, <laughs> before you stream. Was that it, yeah. or is it just that the controller is just no bueno? Doesn't work anymore. Um, it's it's the PS5 controller that shipped with my PS5. Uh huh the year it was released so it's an older controller which okay. is why i use it on the computer it had bad stick drift and for super nintendo it doesn't need the camera stick so it was working perfect and now it's just deciding it doesn't want to work anymore yeah maybe maybe it's something as easy as getting out a nail clipper and cleaning cleaning it out a little bit or something i i was using my xbox one controller at one point and the problem with that one is that the, the USB port in the back is sort of like angled. So over time, my USB wire just became more and more and more and more bent. 
and eventually it just stopped like communicating with the wire so i then had to buy a different controller and i made sure that the xbox one controller i bought was like one of the custom ones that doesn't have that weird angled port in the back so i i feel your pain when it comes to those controller issues there yep and surprisingly even though it's like a windows i run windows on my desktop mm -hmm. um my xbox one series or xbox series x controller would connect through bluetooth but it would randomly disconnect whereas the ps5 controller never disconnected on me interesting so that's why i switched to the ps5 controller um but it might be time to retire this one and get a different one yeah pour one out for uh for knuckles controller uh in chat as well um but so yeah and, League season six is going to be a good one yeah so we'll, let's talk about that a little bit you are going to be joining in at the tonic division because this will be your first ultra league foray um what are you looking forward to with uh, this upcoming season um honestly i just i really enjoy playing the game um i'm not expecting to win my division but i'm hoping to place mid or higher um i know my first seed of this was just under three hours and then i just i kept doing it i dedicated time because i had time available to practice um yep. and then the warring triads event was really fun and i participated in that um and then going back to ultros league from warring triads it's it's a bit different i feel like ultros league is sometimes more forgiving oh it's a lot uh, uh, well easier is sort of the wrong word but yes i think when you say forgiving that's definitely a better way to put it because uh yeah the, the scaling is not as tough and you know that the bosses that you're fighting aren't going to be kafka in warring triads kafka's tower was the final boss of the game whereas in ultra league it is it is Kaf kafka is the real final boss here because you're trying to do it as quickly as possible with as low as level as possible right so yep and you know warring triads there was i don't know if the experience rewards were more but i felt like we were getting higher levels in the warring triads um but also scaling bit. increased higher yeah um and then preparing for fighting the statues was something you always had to worry about yep yep so you were kind of thrown in the deep end as far as like your first event goes with with warring triad most of the non-ultra sleek events are a little bit again more difficult is not essentially the not really the right word but they they require you to have more thought process and foresight whereas this is more of a this is the standard thing we turn off our brain and just go right so um, cool. I also did not know that if you get your final character calmness, even though you have other characters that can come in, that's annihilated. Yeah, so it's it's basically the same thing as if you know uh, you know one of your characters is petrified, you kind of you're kind of done, right? If you're if your entire team wipes on tier like if you wipe to 10 hits on tier two same thing or a death counter with quake right is a is a wipe too and an okay. so but now you know yep, see I... you you learn something playing final fantasy six worlds collide every day oh absolutely um yeah so there's some chat in the chat about the uh the controller stuff I don't use the stick part. I use the D-pad part, and the D-pad part for me is absolutely fine. Uh, maybe it's because I like I make sure I keep it clean. I have to like every once in a while bust out the the nail clipper and put the uh, the nail file part to to get like the dead skin out of it and all the gross stuff like that. But I I don't have problems. The stick I feel would drive me way more crazy than the than the D-pad. Oh yeah, I I use the D-pad on the controller. Um, but the reason I mentioned the analog stick is, mm -hmm. um, the right stick for the camera on the PS5 was getting real bad stick drift. So it was 
like trying to play Overwatch where the camera just moves all over on its own. Oh yeah. Not really the greatest, but no. since there's not a camera angle to change, it doesn't matter on the computer. Right, right. Um, but I don't know if it's, I thought it was maybe a firmware update. So I updated the controller and it's still doing the same thing. So I might have to take a peek at it, see what's going on. Crack that bad boy open and see what's going on. <laughs> We put things together and we take things apart. Any other final words, Knuckley, about uh, the Seed or Ultras League in general before we let you go? Uh, Signups are still open for Ultras League Season 6. If there are any new people out that are interested in joining, then by all means join. It's going to be a blast. Um, everyone in the community is great. If you have any questions, join our Discord. They'll... There's always someone to answer the questions. Um, and then I'm sure it's been mentioned by the previous racers, but the mentor program is something that anyone can take part in. And it is extremely beneficial. I've seen the improvements of other runners that have done the mentoring program. And it's just, it's a phenomenal group of people. Yeah, I, I really enjoy doing the, the mentor program and sharing knowledge and getting feedback because it also gives you a good perspective because you know sometimes mentors will ask questions or mentees will ask questions and I go you know what I haven't tried that let's try it and let's see what happens sort of thing right so even mentors get taught sometimes when with those sessions so it's really great uh, pins in the beginner's house of our discord if you're interested in doing that so thank you again, Knuckly, for uh, volunteering to be on Restream. Can't have the races without the runners. And I think that'll do it for us here. Uh, Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide. Ultras League Season 6 starts April 6th. It's pretty easy to remember. Season 6 starting April 6th. That is a Saturday at noon uh, Eastern. Google o'clock in your own local time zone. And that's going to do it for us. So thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.